Hi, I'm Navid Ansari and in this video I'm going to show you the right way to write your code for a platforming game. So without any further ado, let's begin. So from last video, you remember that we add this player group in here and we have some option for, um, let's say, jump, let's say, run, stand or idle and for the walk. Okay, so I want to show you how you can create your game for a platforming game that is um, the right way to write your code. So let's just close all of these and create our object in here for our player obg player and let's give it an animation of um, a stand or idle okay so and let's just add it to our room make it a little bit bigger than this okay so now let's just run it okay so we have this idle animation in our project if you know if you don't know how you can import a sprite from a sprite sheet or a sprite animation from separate images uh, i did show you in last video how you can do that you can watch that of course but most of you know how you can do that and this video is all about creating a platformer game in a right way um, why i can tell you how you can do that because i did write code in c and c plus plus code for uh, like seven years and in c or c plus plus it's too hard to write code if you don't have your code as modular as possible first thing to do we need some uh, object that player can't go through okay in paul video uh, i'm sure you watch that the platformer widow that paul published okay so we we will use those codes because in most of the game engines for platforming game you should do that okay so you check the keyboard input and you add to x and y value of our player and uh, that's how platformer is done so first of all we need some wall we need some obstacles i want to show you the right way to do that so we need some sprite for our environment so let's just create an sprite here i want to call this spr ground okay let's edit it select these and that's for our ground again create another one for like tree let's edit it and change it to something like this green and that's for our tree again let's just go and create another sprite spr wall edit and um what should we use let's just use this blue color in here for our wall of course you can use your sprite sheet or you can use your as sprites that you have but for testing i want to just show you like this as simple as possible so know that we create our sprites for ground for tree for walls let's just close them and create an object for them so before we moving on from this sprite we should create a group and let's just call it environment okay? and put all of this sprite in this environment so everything is organized and you can find whatever you want in, in there so that's one step to create your game more readable so if you work on a project in a group you should do it like this you should create a lot of groups to tell another uh, programmer what you have done there okay so all the player sprite in the player group and all the environment in is in environment okay so now here let's just create a group again let's call it environment again and right click on it and create an object for our wall okay and give it an sprite of our wall let's duplicate it with Control d let's call this one tree change its sprite to over tree and again create ctrl d to duplicate it let's call it ground double click on it to open it and change its sprite to our ground okay so now we have uh, objects for our ground tree and wall if you remember from paul video um, he did that with just wall i want to show you the right way to detect this object in our game so what we need let's just collapse this and create another group in here and i want to call it control so in this control group i want to put some object in there that controlling the collision controlling the camera and all the controls will be here and everybody know that what this group is for so right click on it create an object and i want to call it obg obstacle okay so what this is for i want this object to be parent of all of the ob obstacles that player can't go through them so we should go to environment open our ground and for the parent of that ground let's select a parent in control obg obstacle so our obg ground now have no have a parent that is obg obstacle i will show you why i'm doing this now let's just close this 
and add this parent to our tree as well because we don't want a player to go through this tree okay this is just for an example so we set the obg obstacle for parent of this tree and now save it and close this again choose the parent for our wall as well control and now all of this environment that player shouldn't go through them has a parent of our obg obstacle and we just check the obg obstacle not just saying that if we reach obg wall we shouldn't go through them okay we we say obg obstacle every time so it will be more readable to other programmers now that we have this control and environment let's just open our obg player and add a create event in here what we need in this create we need horizontal speed that is zero at the create event and vertical speed that is zero as well okay let's just have these two for now and create a step event a step event and in here for it to, to be more readable we should use functions in here so we need one function for input check okay so we need one function for checking the inputs and we need one function for, for movement so let's just create that and know that we have this function if any other programmer check our code they know what they are doing so know that we have this let's create them in a script folder in here let's collapse all of these go to a right click on a script create an script in here let's call it scr player so all the function for the player should be in this SCR player because it's, it's more than enough and it will be much readable than before. So the functions that we need is one of them for input check. Let's copy it and paste it here. So we need one function for input check and we need another function for movement. So let's just copy this movement here and paste it here and now we have those function in our project okay let's get rid of all of this comment in here and know that we have these two function in input check what we should do we should check the inputs so i want to use a and d for going left and right so i say key left is equal keyboard check or character a so whenever they hit a on their keyboard it should go left okay Again for right, key right is equal keyboard check or D. And this D is for going right, okay? So know that we have these two input. What we should do, let's create a variable for moving to left or right and say key right minus key left. If the player hit D on, on their keyboard, the key right will be one and key left will be zero. So key right minus key left will be one and the move will be one and we will use that move to go to the right okay but if they hit a on their keyboard key left will be one and key right will be zero and the zero minus one will be minus one and it will go to the left okay and if they hold both of them both of them will be one and the move will be zero and the player won't move after having this move function we should change the speed of moving our player so we with a and d we want to change horizontal speed so we say hspd for horizontal speed is equal to move multiply by something like 10 for the speed after doing all of this i will change this 10 to something more readable and i we will use enum and struct to do that and it will be more readable for other programmers so for now let's just use this 10 in here and i will change it later so we have this hsp in here let's just show it in debug messages in here let's say a string hspd and now let's just run it to see what we done till here you you can see that hsp is zero from this login here and if we hit d on our keyboard the hsp will be 10 and if we release it it will be zero again if we hit a on our keyboard it will be minus 10 and if we release it it will be zero and if we hit both of them it will be zero as well so now we have this let's just get rid of this show debug message in here know that we have this hsp we can use that to move our character so for that we have this function to use okay what we should do x equal to x plus hspd okay so it will increase the value of the x of our player so now let's just again run it and we can go left and we can, we can go right okay but we don't have any animation yet 
and I want to do those animations in a state machine so it will be much readable. Now that we have this, let's just go to a room and in here create some tree, create some wall in here. So let's just open our object in here, go to environment for the ground. Let's just put the ground in here. And uh, okay, so I did make it bigger like this. We want some wall, let's say in here, make it a little bit bigger. We need some wall in here and we need a tree in here as well so the player can jump on it so now let's just run it again the player can go through all of these and nothing happened okay we don't want that so let me show you how you can do that in more readable fashion so for doing that let's just go back in here so we do have these two line of code in a step event of our object player okay so in movement we want to check if it's reach the wall or if it's if it's reach a tree or if it's reach a ground it shouldn't go through it okay so let's just go to this movement function again and in here i want to use the function of place meeting so we can say if place meeting we can say x plus hspd i will i will explain what it does but the tips in here what we should use for object input, input, we should use obg obstacle, okay? Not just obg wall or obg ground or obg uh, tree, okay? So we should use obg obstacle because it's parent of all of the environment that player shouldn't go through them. So whenever you want to create an object that player shouldn't go through them, you don't need to change any code. You can just make it a child of these obg obstacles okay so know that we have this function let me show you what this place meeting is of course i know most of you know what it is but let me show you you can read through this it will explain it good but for this checking for this example in here it says that i'll check Check to see if there is not a collision to the left of instance and move the instance if there is none. Okay, so that's the explanation of place meeting. So in here we say if in place of x a little further of our player, if player going right, HSP will be 10. So it will check x of our player, increase it by the value of HSP and the y value. And if there is an obstacle in there, it won't go through it. So when there is an, an obstacle, we should say HSPD is equal zero. So the player shouldn't go further. So let's just play it and know if we go to right, it won't go through any obstacles. Okay, so with that, we don't need to um, check for tree, check for wall or check for ground to check if, we, if there is a wall or tree in front of us we just check for obg obstacles okay you can see when we go right or left it won't go as near as possible it go as near as 10 pixel you can see it here why because our hsp that we check from here is 10 okay so what we should do we should go here and say while place let me write it i will explain it what it does x plus sign of hspd for horizontal speed and y and in here we should check for obg obstacle write this code okay so let me explain let's say player is going to the right okay so hspd is positive 10 okay so the sign of 10 will be one the sign function just showing you if it's positive or if it's negative so when we go in right the sign of hspd will be one and when we go left the sign of hspd will be minus one with this we check one pixel ahead of player to see if there is an obstacle or not so we say if there is not an obstacle one pixel at the right or the left according the movement of our player if while it's not any obstacle ahead of our player just increase our x value by one pixel so we can use this sign of hspd let's just copy this paste it here and with this we while why there is no obstacle one pixel ahead of player it will go near that obstacle so with that let's just run our game to see what is the difference if we go you can see it will go as close as it possible to the obstacles so that's what movement is and we can collapse that now okay we are done with that i think the video is is taking too long from here and i will create a video series and put it in playlist you can watch all of those so you can 
find out how you can create your project as readable as possible so let's recap till now the first tip was that when you create your environment objects you shouldn't in your code like we did in here we shouldn't uh, check for all of these uh, if you check in for obg ground obg tree and obg wall all the time for three of them it will be a mess so we create a control object in here call it obg obstacle and make it apparent of all of these objects that players shouldn't go through them and uh, we just check for that obg obstacle so you should use that it will be more readable and all the programmer know that it, this obstacle is the object that player shouldn't go through them the next tip was that create function for every thing that you want to do in your game so for input check we have this function and for movement we have this function so it will be more readable to just read this and all the programmer know that this input check what it does and what this movement it's doing is doing in the next video i will show you how you can apply gravity to your platformer game in the right way and how you can create an estate machine to show all of those cool animation to be more readable to other programmers thank you very much for watching if you want to help me please hit that like button thank you bye